Om Namo Narayana, and welcome back. We're working our way through the Ramayana. We're reading today in the Ramayana chapters 33 and 34. Chapter 33 is called Kushanaba's Daughter's Marriage. After hearing the words of the great Kushanaba, those girls touched his feet with their head and told, O oh, king, the wind god who is everywhere wanted to dishonor us by improper approach and disregarding dharma. We are dependent on our father, and it would be proper, O oh, wind god, if you approach our father, to know whether he is willing to give us to you. Due to his being tied by sinful words, that wind god did not bother about our words and harmed us. That greatly resplendent king, who is a great follower of dharma, on hearing their words, replied like this to those matchless one hundred daughters. O oh, daughters, having patience and self-control, you have done your actions in great glory, and due to your unity, the prestige of my clan has also been kept up. Patience is a great ornament for ladies and also for men. It is extremely difficult to forgive, and it is very rare even among devas, asuras, and human beings. And, O oh, daughters, the patience that all of you have is to be greatly appreciated. Uh, patience is a great charity. It is truth and a great yagna. It is fame, it is dharma, and the entire universe is resting because of patience. After leaving his daughters, that king, valorous in all three worlds, and who was also an expert in thought, did consultations with his important ministers and discussed about his duty over time and distance. During that time, there was a great resplendent sage called Chuli, who was strict in Brahmacharya, followed good rituals, and had achieved greatness in doing penance on Brahma. When this sage was doing penance, a Gandharva maid, whose name was Somada, and who was the daughter of Urmila, served him. She bowed down to him and served him with righteousness, and after some time that sage, who was a follower of Dharma, was greatly satisfied with her service. That sage, after some passage of time, told her, I am happy with your service. What shall I do to please you? Seeing that the sage was pleased, that very happy Gandavara lady, who was an expert in language, told the sage, O oh, great sage, who has the supreme knowledge of Brahman, with your penance you have become equal to Lord Brahma himself. I may be blessed with a son, is the follower of Dharma. Since I am not married to anyone, I am not a wife to anyone, and I have taken shelter under you. It is suitable that you give me a son." That Brahmin sage became pleased with her, and that truly gave her a son, who became very famous with the name of Brahma Dutta. He became a king to the city, called Kampilya. He was similar to Indra, the king of heaven, and ruled it with superb grandeur. Now that king, Kushanaba, who was a follower of Dharma, endowed with great intelligence, made up his mind to give all his one hundred daughters in marriage to King Brahma Dutta. Then that great king invited King Brahmadutra and gave all his daughters in marriage to him with great joy in his mind. As per the tradition, the king Brahmadutra, who was like the king of Devas, took the palm of each of those girls in his hand in order. As soon as he touched their hands, their desperation and hunched back forms vanished, and each of those hundred maidens became like the goddess Lakshmi, and all of them shined brightly. Seeing them getting released from the curse of the wind god, King Kushanaba became extremely joyful and again and again was filled with joy when he looked upon his daughters. After completing the marriage ceremony, King Kushanaba bid farewell to all of them, including the priests of King Brahmadutra. The Gandvara lady, Somada, became happy with the matchless job done by his son in getting those pretty wives. She caressed her son, Brahmadutta, and her daughter-in-laws again and again, and she praised King Kushanaba greatly. Thus ends chapter 33. Chapter 34, King Gadi's Story After the marriage ceremony and departure of King Brahmadutta, King Kushanaba, who does not have any sons, performed a Putra Kameshti Yagna. While the ritual was being conducted, the generous Kush, who was the son of Lord Brahma, spoke to the king. O oh son, you will get a virtuous son who will be just like you. He will be called as Gadi, and he will get fame in all three worlds. After saying this, Kusha vanished in the sky. A son named Gadi would be born to Kushanaba, who was highly intellectual and a follower of Dharma. 
After saying this, Kusha vanished in the sky. After some time, the king got a virtuous son who was to be known as Gadi. Oh, Rama, my father Gadi was a great follower of Dharma, and since I was born in the clan of Kusha, I was called a Kushika. I also had an elder sister named Satyavathi, and she was given in marriage to a sage called Rikshika. Desiring to do service to the world, my sister emerged as a pious river and depended on the Himalayan mountains. Accompanying her husband, she went to heaven with her body, and being a generous lady, she coursed as the famous river known as Kashiki. O oh, Rama, hence I am living in the foothills of the Himalayan mountains, happily performing my rituals, and near me flows my dear sister, who loves me. She was a pious one, completely established in Dharma, a virtuousness really great, and now is one of the chief rivers known as Kashiki. Rama, being bound by a vow, I left her, and reaching Siddhas Rama, I have completed my vow and have come back because of you. This is the story of my birth, a famous family, in the place where we are camping now and narrated by me in response to your question. O oh, Rama, after relating the story by me, it's now past midnight. Please, sleep safely now and no further hindrance happen on our way. Now all the trees are still, the birds and animals are asleep, to our eyes the sky is decorated by stars and starlets which are spread densely. The sky is slowly getting spread with stars and is shining with the stars and planets which is making it bright. Also the cool moon is rising in the sky to end the darkness of the world and the light of the moon is gladdening the hearts of all the animals and people. All those beings which move about at night, including yakshas and rakshasas, as well as the angry man-eaters, are milling about everywhere. Saying this, the great sage, who was lustrous, paused, and all the sages appreciated that sage by saying, Well said. They further said, The kings of Kushika dynasty have been protectors of Dharma always, and those great men are equal to Lord Brahma. O oh, greatly famous Viswamitra, you are exemplary and equal to Lord Brahma. Your dynasty is greatly exemplified by the river Kashiki, your sister. The sage was greatly pleased and then entered into a deep sleep like the sun going down on the western mountains. Rama and Lakshmana were also greatly astonished by the story, praised the tiger-like sage, and started serving him. Thus ends chapter 34, where we find out who this sage is and his background in a nice little story that I didn't see coming. <laughs> uh, God, I don't really have anything to say about that um, other than that was kind of sweet and kind of nice and the deformed daughters from the previous video found life again. And I'm just going to leave it there. Any thoughts, comments, or anything that you guys have down below. And until next time, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare.